Good morning, afternoon, or evening. My name is Ben, and this is finally another Game Maker tutorial. It has been way too long. In this tutorial, we are going to learn how to do some simple gamepad input. And that actually reminds me, I'm going to have to use my Xbox controller here for this tutorial. I totally spaced that. So let me plug that in real fast. Now, uh, you can use for this, I don't know how many different gamepads are compatible. I know for sure an Xbox controller is compatible. I also know that the PlayStation 3 controller is compatible. So, um, that I'm not going to teach you really how to set that up. I just have a USB Xbox controller that I just plug right into my computer and it is ready to go. So that's what I would recommend. I know that if you have a Mac, you can get a special driver that allows Xbox controllers to work on your Mac. So look into that if you need to do that. But other than that, let's start. So let's create a sprite here. We're gonna create two sprites, a player, and we'll, co we'll uh, color this guy in. I'm just gonna make him 32 by 32, nothing special, and Let's see, we'll let our player be white, or green maybe, green's good. We all know how much I like green, I choose green all the time, so cool. Kind of a pastel looking green there, and I'm going to give him an axis in the center. Now I'm going to create a, a wall, sprite. Um, we'll just call it solid sprite solid and this one will also be 32 by 32 and I'm just gonna make it gray for because I like gray too gray and green now we're gonna create our room and this is probably all stuff you guys are very familiar with so let's see here uh, oh pff, I'm already where I want to be room one. That's a creative name. Now I'm actually pretty excited about this tutorial because uh, it's quite a bit of fun to mess around with controller input. I spent most of yesterday actually doing that. So let's create our objects. Object. Player. And object solid sweet so there's a few things you should know first of all when you are um, when you are we're not gonna actually make our solid object solid right now uh, in fact we'll never make it solid you're just gonna use this solid object as a parent for all your other solid objects and that's just that's one of the things that I've learned since I started doing these tutorials is that messing around with solid objects and collisions is just not usually a good thing and I I learned this from Sean <laughs> the, so if you haven't checked out any of his videos you should go watch them at this level looks horrible but it's just an example so I'm gonna leave it so what we're going to do now is, now that we've got our solid and our player, make sure that our solid is not checked solid. We, don't, we do not want it to be checked solid. We're going to create a script. Now I don't know if I've taught you guys very much about scripts, but scripts can take this thing called arguments. And we're going to actually be using that. And I really, yeah, there we go. I really want to be able to not have this be that huge on my screen. <laughs> so, okay. Here's a really cool thing about scripts. First of all, um, you're going to want to name this script. And this script is going to be actually what we use to grab the input from the controller. So we're going to call this script get gamepad input okay and the very first thing that you put in this script if if you do it as a comment with three dashes like that 
um, Game Maker will recognize that and when you're trying to type out this script it will give you the helpers you know how if you're if you're typing out something like move direction sorry motion let's try like motion add you see down here at the bottom where down here at the bottom it gives you helpers this little helper motion add and then it says direction and speed um, you can create that type of a helper for your script so we're gonna do that so and you notice that uh, motion add when you look down here it has two arguments direction and speed so those are its arguments so we're going to be creating our own arguments for this script. So we're basically building a function inside of GameMaker. So this is going to be script get gamepad input, just like we put up there. But now we're going to put a parentheses. And the first argument is going to be the device. And we're just creating these arguments. I'm naming them what I want to, but I want to name it device. And the second one is going to be the threshold. So now we've got our helper. So now we're going to create two variables. And just so you know, this is uh, not going to work very well in GameMaker for Mac because you can't do what I'm about to do right here. Um, let's just do keep current color scheme. No, change the color scheme. It's going to just ask me until I do it. So there. Okay. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to create two variables. Now, if you have a Mac, you can create these variables in the create event and then just not put the word var in the front. So it will work. It's just more of a pain. So let's do device equals argument zero um, thresh threshold equals argument one. So now what we've done is we've taken the two arguments and we've assigned them to these variables. Now the only reason I've done that is because it makes it easier to read the code. And if you have GameMaker Studio, this, the, creating this variable using the keyword var is that this variable <coughs> excuse me, only exists inside of this script. So we can't access this variable outside of this script, but that's fine. We don't need to. So let's do, uh, at least I hope we don't need to, <laughs> we'll find out. So now we're going to grab the actual input and we're just gonna grab the input from the left joystick on the gamepad. So let's type out a comment and do, well, I'm not, yeah, actually I don't wanna do that. So we're gonna set some variables, H axis, well, let's do x axis equals gamepad axis value and this is our device and the devices are I think 0 through 3 so 0 1 2 3 those are the devices and we're probably we're going to use 0 cuz that's going to be the only one plugged in so device and then gp axis LH and I lied I want this to be well we'll leave it as the x-axis so what this does is it grabs the gamepad and whichever one we're talking to that's the device and then this right here is the horizontal axis for the left joystick so this is only the horizontal axis so if you were building like a platform game, this might be the only one you worry about because you only care about moving left and right, not up and down. So that's what that does. We're going to do y axis equals gamepad axis value. Then we want our device. And then we want gp axis lv for the vertical axis. That's pretty easy. Now we need to get a magnitude though and magnitude equals in fact why why do I even have a threshold argument I honestly don't need this right now 
I don't... I, oh, I know. I need it for my other one. So take out the whole threshold argument. We're just going to give it a device. So a device... Yeah, that's our only argument is the device. So magnitude equals... Let's see. Point distance zero, zero. So we're trying to find out how far... Um, how far away the gamepad is from, or how far away the joystick is from the center. So we want to figure out how far they're pushing the joystick out. You know, when you're moving the joystick, you can you can move it just a little teeny bit, or you can move it a lot on the analog stick. So we're going to figure out how much it is using this uh, point distance. Now we're going to give it two in. Uh, for the first x and y value, we're going to give it 0 and 0. So just the very top of the screen, because we're just using this to calculate something. We're not actually drawing it there. For the next one, we're going to do the x-axis. And the next one, we're going to do the y-axis. Now, this right here returns a value between 0 or negative 1 and 1. So both of them do actually so what that means is if our x-axis is negative one and our y-axis is zero then our magnitude is going to be the distance from zero zero so the origin to negative one so the magnitude is going to be one because it's going to find that distance so that's what this is doing right here it's just finding that distance okay now there's one thing we do want to do. We want to do, um, actually we don't need to do that. Maybe we do actually. If magnitude is greater than or equal to, is greater than one, magnitude equals one. Awesome. So in our character, we need to actually initialize these variables right here in the create event. So uh, let's come into here. Add event, create event. And I'm going to do that three comment thing again here at the top. Initialize variables. And there they are. Only this time I'm going to put them all at zero. Because we're just creating them. Okay. And this comment up here with the three dashes makes this say that. So we know what that code does now. It's a pretty cool trick. Now let's come back into our script that we we're writing. And I think this one's actually done. So we're going to create. So that actually gets the input. So we're already getting input from the controller. We already have that done. What we need to do now is move the player according to the input that we've got. So this script is going to be complicated. Just so you know, <laughs> it's, a, it's a pretty complicated script, but it's worth it because it moves the player. It, it makes this feel really, really nice. This is actually the exact script that I'm using in my Project Grain War. So if you guys have been wondering how I got some of that stuff done, this is the exact script. I'm basically giving you guys this code from my game. So. And I'll step through it and teach you what it does so it won't be too complicated. So this one I'm going to call script move. Uh, I want to call this move axis. Because we're giving it um, two axis and a magnitude and a speed. So that's why I want to call it that instead of move direction or anything like that. So we're going to do our three dash comment here, script, move, axis, and then the first one is going to be the x axis, the next argument is going to be the um, y axis, then we're going to do magnitude, and we're going to do speed. Okay. Now we're going to create those variables 
x-axis equals argument zero. Y, uh, yeah, y-axis equals argument one. If I can spell argument right, great. Magnitude equals argument two. And we've already made sure that the magnitude can't be greater than one. Um, let's see. Speed equals. Now I've done SPD instead of SPE instead of that speed because I don't want to use the built in speed variable. I'm doing my own speed. We don't want to mess around with their speed. So equals uh, argument three times the magnitude. So what does that do? If magnitude is 0.5, so if they're only pushing the joystick out halfway, then it's going to times the speed by 0.5, and our character is only going to move half of his fastest speed. So this is going to give us the, the speed, um, the analog for the speed, so that he can move really, really slow if you barely press it at all or really, really fast. Um, also, though, this variable needs a, this, this, let's see, we need x-axis, y-axis. We actually need a threshold for this one. This is the one that needs a threshold. So magnitude is actually going to be argument 3, and speed is going to be argument 4, and we're going to create another one. Threshold equals uh, argument 2. Okay, so we do need a threshold, and why is that? Because these are the, the analog stick is constantly giving input, and for values under a certain amount or under our threshold, we don't care about it, or else our character is going to be just constantly kind of sliding around a little bit, and so we want to make sure that we only move them if the joystick goes past a certain threshold. So that's important. Now what we're going to do is actually start moving the character. And this is where it gets kind of complicated because I basically use some simple trig. But I'll explain it. So let's just step through it together and I'll explain it to you. So move the character if you can. Okay. If the absolute value, so ABS, of the x-axis is greater than or equal to the threshold. Actually, yeah, I'll just stick with what I've got. But I, I just realized that now that I have a magnitude, I could probably use magnitude instead. In fact, that's better. I'm going to try it. <laughs> so if magnitude is greater than or equal to the threshold, so if the joystick is moving more than our threshold, um, let's see, it looks like I do another variable here. This might be one I can put inside of here though. Dir equals point direction. So we've got to create one more variable. Equals point direction zero zero x axis y axis. So we're just grabbing the direction that the joystick is pointing and that's obvious that we would need that so um, we're gonna do if not place meeting and you could use place free but like I said I've learned that dealing with solid objects is a pain and you can use place meeting instead we're gonna do X um,
So actually, we're going to use some more variables quite a lot. So, well, yeah, I'm going to create a variable for this. So now what we need to do Well, let's try something. We might not even the we, we might not even need the direction. So, let's try something here. If place meeting x plus Okay, now I know why I did it that way actually. Yeah, so we'll stick with what I've got. I'm going to create two new variables. And we're going to call this uh Exter wider. So this is the amount that it moves in these two directions. And the reason I'm doing this is because it it, it might seem kind of counterintuitive because I'm I've got I've got an x axis variable and I'm converting this from a direction into back into an x axis type variable maybe it is counterintuitive <laughs> I'm just looking at my code and seeing if I can make it any better essentially because this I, I might be able to do this differently I'm just gonna I'm just gonna try it. I don't see why not. Okay, I'm gonna try something new. So if we step off of a cliff together here, then that's great. But I think this should work. So let's do x plus x axis. Um, x axis times speed. So we don't have to multiply speed by the magnitude anymore. We might not even need the magnitude. This is this is interesting. I might be simplifying this code quite a bit, which will be good for you guys. It'll be easier to explain. So okay, x axis times speed, y plus y axis times speed. object solid holy cow that code is way shorter than it is on my <laughs> okay x plus equals x axis times speed y plus equals y axis times speed Now we've got to have two more of these, else if, let's see, not place meeting, x plus x axis times speed, y, object solid, x plus equals x axis times speed else if not place meeting x y plus y axis times speed object solid y plus equals y axis times speed and that's it and add some spaces for readability here 
so okay I'm if this works I'm not even sure this is gonna work but if it does work then this is like quite a bit simpler than what I was doing before and it also means that magnitude should probably stay inside of here and we don't need direction anymore in fact this right here is going to be our magnitude And huh, really interesting. Yeah, we don't need direction anymore. Huh, cool. So our magnitude isn't going to be an argument anymore. So take magnitude out. We'll leave threshold in. Speed is now going to be argument three, so make sure you change that to argument three. In fact, if you need to pause here, I'm going to give you a second because you might need to catch up. So now I'm going to explain this code. So first, this is pretty obvious. If there's nothing in the way um, from the our x-axis and speed and our y-axis and speed, move there right but why do I have these other codes right here well I have that there because sometimes your characters up against a wall but the joist the 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 joystick or the analog stick is still just a little bit uh, going maybe the walls above you and the analog stick is going up but a little bit to the left we still want to be able to move to the left so this essentially just checks a certain direction to see if we can move that way, even if we can't move the other way. So that's what that code does. And I think I've simplified this quite a bit. So let's go and make sure that any of this even works. Come into uh, your object player, create a step event, and add a new uh, code. And we're just going to do script get gamepad input, and the device is going to be zero. Then we're going to do another one script move axis, and we've got our x axis, which is going to be just x axis, because we've created that variable, and the game and our gamepad script is grabbing that input y axis. And you can see down here it helps us. We've got the little helper uh, information. Our threshold, I do 0.25 for my threshold. And that seems to work pretty good for me. And for the speed, I'm just going to give our character a speed of 4. And inside of our input here, we actually don't need to have this magnitude anymore. Completely not really important, I don't think. And inside of our create event, we don't need to have the magnitude here either. Okay. Well, let's cross our fingers that this works because I changed a lot of code <laughs> from what it normally, from what it originally was. But it is quite a bit simpler. So if this works, that's awesome. If it doesn't, I might have to re record this video. Okay, you can see. Our threshold isn't working right now because it's moving. Okay, that works. Huh. Not too bad, actually. You can see that our character kind of drifts, and that means that the threshold isn't working. So I need to go. Um, double check that real quick inside of the code. 
So the magnitude, if magnitude is greater than the threshold. Oh, oh, we've got point direct direction. This should be point distance. I'm surprised that I don't know what the heck that would have even done. You want this to be point distance. So. That should work now where our character won't drift anymore. Yeah. Yeah, perfect. And you can see you can move slow, or if you move all the way over, he'll, he'll move faster. So you've got that analog input. And you might want to do your threshold a little bit lower. And you'll notice that it doesn't really... Sometimes it doesn't move up against walls very well. Like it kind of leaves a little bit, bit of an edge there. And actually, this is the this is exactly how my grain war game works. And just because of the way that I've got the graphics and the world set up, you don't ever notice that. Like, you wouldn't notice it. So uh, that's something that you can fix. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna talk about how to fixing how to fix that in this tutorial video because this is basic analog input. So Maybe next time I'll talk about how to fix that. But yeah, this is pretty cool. I'm using my controller, moving it around. It feels feels really awesome. Um, and honestly, I've had so much fun messing around with this. I do want to show you guys one more thing in the Game Maker help file. If you type in in the search gamepad, just hit enter you'll see gamepad input and this right here is the source of all truth and knowledge because it has everything on gamepad input this is where I learned everything and you can see they have numbers for every single button so you can do um, gamepad button check this one right here I use gamepad gamepad button check. You can do if gamepad button check pressed or if gamepad button check and then you just pass it one of these like a GP face 4 for the Y button on an Xbox controller. You can check to see if that button has been pressed. So that is pretty easy. It's pretty straightforward. This is what I would recommend looking up if you want to do anything else with the gamepad. So Thank you guys for watching this video. I do apologize for not having another video recently because my I've had some issues with my audio and video recording software and I really, really hope that this software works because I'm trying something new. So I hope it works and I hope this video was helpful. If it was, be sure and like it, favorite it, subscribe. Check out my links in the description. I've got my Facebook, my Twitter, information on my game Grain War down there as well. So anything you guys do is super helpful, and I will do better at making tutorials this week. So I will talk to you guys later.